otherwise, you know, reporting lots of transactions or very high value transactions or, or, or things like that. So, but because a lot of it is seasonal, business driven, all of that. So, does it make sense for that business at all? So, <coughs> how can I define what my peers look like or what my segments look like? So, there are static variables there that define that, there are transactional variables because, for example, my spend on my credit card, I use my credit card almost more often than my uh, you know, savings account. Um, only by habit because and I pay it off every month, but that's because I know if you know there's something wrong, I, I don't want to pay for it because it's not gone out of my bank account still. So I, I have a chance to challenge that. But the idea is so my usage of my credit card pattern could put me in a different peer group as opposed to me just using my savings account. Right. So the idea to be able to dynamically create, so I could be part of five different peers and my activity has to be assessed in relation to five different <coughs> peers. Not just one static peer group saying, oh Prashant is 37 years old, lives in Hyderabad, is a CEO of Jakarta, this is annual income and then that's it. Right? Because that's going to throw up a lot of false positives. So how do I move transactional and product elements into my peer grouping, into my risk analytics in a dynamic way is one of the very key differentiators when you actually try to put in models like this. Now how I review all this information? It's a tough of information that's coming out, right? So unless this visual starts, uh, unless all of this starts to get very visual, it is extremely hard to make a decision. There is no way you can look at Excel sheets and just, you know, screens and, and then try and come up with, you know, and especially when you're going to say something is actually suspicious or not suspicious, right? So the idea is how do I present this visual? Now can I first collate all of this information at a customer level. Can I then look at current versus historic? You know, can I aggregate all of this together? We run scoring models behind because then you can apply artificial intelligence algorithms on the scores and on the scoring methodologies that we actually run. So there's a lot of thought that goes into how you present this information. Um, so you'll see summary information up top, you'll see all the uh, alerted information on the key risks that were shown second, which is a time scale analysis, a cluster algorithm after that and finally you can see a, a network. So what do I mean by all that? Right? So, so what you saw was a time scale analysis of that particular customer. You can go back in time, you can drag that. Or you can also look at how he's behaving compared to his peers. So what he said he would do maybe at the time of account opening, what he's actually doing versus the segment that he actually is in and what he does. Right? And by transaction, I should be able to go back in time. Networks. So a lot of people use visualization tools to show you the networks of you know who this customer is dealing with, how he's dealing with it. But unless you're able to dynamic and this overrides static data, so if two people get the same pad number, for example, it happens very often in the Indian scenario because the wife may give the husband's pad number. Right? It happens a lot of times, but you should be able to detect that on this and say, okay, these two are actually the same uh, in many ways. But then not only is it this, but then can I be able to filter that data? in almost real time. So show me only transactions that are coming from a certain country. Show me transactions that were over a certain amount within a certain period. How many people and how many levels do I go to? Is it one? Is it two? Is it three? So obviously and then there's a lot of importance put to data, data cleansing and, and, and doing all of that. But again, unless we do all of this holistically as an organization, top down approach, there's enough money and investment into technology, this becomes really hard to be able to automate a to this kind of compliance function, or not even automate, but make it actually meaningful uh, from a risk and a monitoring perspective. <coughs> analytics, you all talked about analytics and measurement. How do I look at all of this data? So for example, I should be able to provide you so many different slices of this data that actually makes sense for you to go back and look at what you're monitoring and whether you're effectively monitoring that. So whether I tell you whether it's aging, where it is in the workflow, so an analyst might be slacking up on their job might be taking more time because maybe they have more complex cases. Uh, what is the outcome? Right? Are we being consistent in the way we look at the outcome? And if at all that is happening, then what is the distribution of that data by branch, by customer type, by rule? Uh, so many different. So we, we measure across every single what over 50 different variables are actually put in to measure all of this because then this goes into your uh, the intelligence and the machine learning that you was talking about. <coughs> Yeah. So finally, and, and the biggest part of this is, I mean, we're all people, someone mentioned it really well, we're different by DNA, each organization is different, 
and hence our perception of what risk is and what's there is also different and the way we interpret information is also different. So it is very important to enforce operational consistency in this process so that you can learn from it meaningfully. And what does that mean? And, and that's where technology has to enable that. So if you actually, you know, uh, if someone paid attention to the way the screens progress or the way we actually progress it, first you will always see a summary of the customer information. Then I will see the summary of all the risks or the alerts that I got from a compliance perspective. Then I will actually look at a time series analysis. Then I would look at a cluster analysis, and then finally I would look at a network analysis. So even if I were to just break it at a high level, every person who uses this particular platform will have to go through these sequence of steps. And that enforces an operational and an organizational consistency in terms of my policy and my procedure being operationalized within the technology platform that I've actually chosen. Right? And at scale. And if you can do this consistently and capture this data consistently, that's when I can actually apply machine learning or intelligence. Because without this, what it will throw up is absolute joke. Absolute joke. So I think that's where, so for us, it's it's been really, uh, you know, and for me personally, it was really rewarding to actually work with the bank on this initiative. It was, it was a very bold initiative for them to revamp their entire existing, you know, uh, compliance program. Um, and, then, and then use technology so heavily uh, and especially trust maybe technology from a startup uh, in, in doing this. So, um, in fact, I, you know, we were just joking with the previous panel when uh, I think Sonal mentioned uh, attendance uh, needs to be in a hard copy. Like, I so just tapped me and said, Do you have that? And I said, No. And he's like, Oh, that's a risk factor for me then. Uh, so, I might have to go and find that guy who can give me the description if I offer to hold it. But, uh, but anyway, so, uh, so I just wanted to bring a technology perspective and, and, and just show you an actual transformation case of, of their vision and their vision and how we've been able to uh, help with that. So, thank you all. Thank you. So, very interactive presentation. Uh, we can obviously take a couple of questions now and, and some later. Do we have questions? Yes. Okay. From Vikram. Yes. Sorry, this is Troy. Sorry, sorry. 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 Where does the data reside? Because 80 million customers, you know, plus one or two customers who want the reaction data, that's like 40 million reactions a day. Is it in a separate sandbox environment that you run this algorithm zone, or is it a real life system? So uh, the answer is in a sandbox environment. One, but uh, there is a mirror image created at the end of the day into that so that we don't touch the main system and whatever experiments and others we call it the MIS server uh, and we constantly use that. Yeah, because the reason I ask every time you give the users the ability to run query, they could become really wide and very churn the whole data. Yeah. And that's why it's just a story that's on experiment. I mean, we should definitely allow experiment in this space because I can be a Kind of go to the extreme of zero defects or the environment is not So, and we, just to um, answer that, it's actually a, a, a cluster of 16 servers that supports this. So, a very high end, uh, you know, almost 16 cores uh, per cluster per server that is. So, uh, I think they've really made that investment in terms so of it's not on the giving us. No, it's not on the cluster, no, not at all. Because this transaction did all so, right? So, to put all that, I mean, it's the entire bank data <coughs> across all of the systems. So, um, <laughs> so uh, no, no, it's not, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a significant investment even from an infrastructure perspective. Um, so out of that, we dedicate it to the live environment so that the users are not disrupted in their day-to-day -day stuff. Um, but then, what we also do is the, the end of the day process actually runs a lot of the aggregate calculations that you actually need the peer clustering, the ability to 
shift across time and all of that there, those aggregates are run and prepared in, you know, during the night. Uh, and in certain cases, uh, on the weekend. So for two days. Um, and I mean, they're really trying some innovative things. I mean, one of Shalish's biggest demands has been a mobile app for this. Uh, where they, really, uh, you know, I mean, I think we've cracked it, but uh, it's a tough ask to put all of this kind of data in an experience that's directly to the mobile phone. Um, you know, but given the amount he has to review and actually approve and then do all of that, I think it's an important piece. And so uh, we're actually going to put all of that on a, on a mobile app that we take care of. So. The last one that I'm sure I can talk about the others. Um, as Steve mentioned, it's dynamic. I can sense that a lot of it is dynamic based on the transactions that we have to comparison, etc. But a lot of it is also uh, static. So the industry that the customer is uh, mentioned in his KYC. This is what I do. I'm a carpet seller, and then suddenly we start seeing what is being paid for. How does that come about? Do you pick it from the transaction information or is that still a KYC, CBD sort of a cycle? Once the customer is onboarded, uh, we use the static parameters. But once he is onboarded, then there are a set of separate dynamic parameters which are calculated on a very short period. So if I find that a person comes in and says, I'll have a turnover of five crores. Yeah. And uh, within the first three months, he's already crossed two and a half, for example. It's done. Yeah. And uh, three months is crossed two and a half. Now, there could be two scenarios. One, if it's a uh, cyclical business, and that's a period where the cycle thing happens. <coughs> Sorry. I have a back word. So you need to calculate. Level for a full view. 
So that is actually save time. Now let me give an example. Uh, if Prashant has got five alerts, and Salish Verma looks at the alert at 10 o'clock in the morning, and he closes it saying it does not work. But you could be looking at the alert at 2 o'clock. You are looking at the same account of Prashant. And your colleague over there could be looking at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. So it was a pure drain on uh, organizational resources that five people at five different timings were looking at five transactions. So we said, no, we should move it to a customer. And that actually gives you the advantage of looking at the holistic 360 table. So across customers, accounts, products, transactions, all aggregated. I think a uh, very interactive session and good hearing. Uh, appreciate gentlemen for your time and the presentation. Uh, thank you, Shailesh, for, for coming in and sharing the property information. <laughs> you can stay because you are the only common person you know between you know conceptual discussion and panel discussion <coughs> so why don't i uh, invite the next panel discussion moderator uh, chandra mohan devarapalli uh, he is the lead doctor this program for well